Welcome to the first day of the judicial hearings. Now, I know that sounds crazy because we've been having all these hearings, so how can this be the first day, right? Well, remember a couple of weeks ago? That was the Intel um, Committee, and this is the Judicial Committee. This is the committee that actually is responsible for doing everything with the impeachment. They are the, the, this is the committee that will actually draw up the articles of impeachment. So I just wanna go over the top five takeaways from today. It was fascinating. Um, I thought it was going to be boring, but they brought in four scholars um, and three of them supported impeachment and I'll tell you why. And then one did not and I'll tell you why. But who was brought in today? Um, Noah Feldman, really good, from Harvard University. Pamela Carlin from Stanford was the star by far. Um, Michael Gerhart, I think that's how you pronounce his name, from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, I believe. And then Jonathan Turley, you've probably seen him a lot on television if you watch any kind of cable news. He's from George Washington Law School, and um, he was actually against impeachment, even though he voted for Clinton and Obama in the past, but I'll tell you um, a little bit about him afterwards. So I want to make this quick so that you'll always watch, and I'm sorry about this blue, this blue in my eyes, got to figure that out. But um, the first thing is that, you know, Trump was over in London for the NATO conference, celebrating 70 years, I believe. And he was supposed to have a conference or a press conference or something when this began. He canceled it and got straight on Air Force One. Now, a lot of people believe that it was to watch these hearings, but he doesn't watch them, you know. But a lot of people also believe, other people believe, that it was because they were laughing at him um, at the conference yes, last, yesterday, last night. But they laugh at him all the time, so I don't know why that would be any different. Anyway, let's go over the five things you should take away. Again, it was fascinating because they started out explaining, explaining where did impeachment come from? I hope you know it's in the Constitution. So that's very important. Well, the founders actually got it from England. They had impeachment there in their country, but there was one difference. The king of England could not be impeached. And so they felt, the founders felt, that that made the king above the law. So they wanted impeachment for anyone in government. Did you know that? Did you know that any of the cabinet members can be impeached? Did you know that judges can be impeached? And several have been impeached in the last few years, but we haven't been paying attention to that. But they've been impeached in the Senate. So um, that was where it came from. They wanted to hold people accountable. They felt that a man um, in that position would have so much power that if there were no checks and balances on him, he could do anything and become a king, which is what they were trying to get away from. So that's why they started impeachment and they felt that they were really going to have to have impeachment because let me read the words I wrote down. The founders put impeachment in the constitution because they were afraid of foreign countries impacting our elect our elections. Can you believe that? This is back in the 1700s and they had that feeling um, because that was what was happening even then. So they put impeachment in place to make sure that there was no foreign um, interference. That was the thing that worried them most. They weren't afraid of bribery and and wire well they were afraid of bribery but things like wiretapping and things they didn't know that wasn't even in existence they were mostly afraid of what foreign countries could do to this brand new experiment of government which was a democracy so that's why they put it in 
Now, when they first put it in, they were really arguing about whether or not it should be in. And um, names that you may recognize, George Mason. Um, anyway, they were all saying, why impeachment? Should we do it? A lot of people did not want to do it. Um, someone said, let's not have impeachment. Let's just wait for the next election. And they said, there's no way to wait for the next election because if you have someone who is depending on interference to win, they will do anything to win. And so you cannot wait for the next election. That's the second thing. Isn't that interesting? Um, especially in the times that we're in now. So the first thing is the reason why they put in impeachment. They didn't want anyone in this country to be above the law. And the second reason that they have it instead of waiting for elections is that a cheater is a cheater is a cheater, basically. Uh, so the third thing came from um, Feldman, the first gentleman who spoke. And if you get a chance, just go to YouTube and look look at all of their opening statements. That's all you really need. They were fantastic. I promise you, you will learn a lot. But he had one of the greatest quotes. Um, he said, if we cannot impeach a president who abuses his office for personal advantage, then we no longer live in a democracy. He said that if we don't impeach Donald Trump for this, there will never be another impeachment ever. And it's part of the Constitution so people won't abuse power. Um, the star of the show to me was the woman, I still call her the star, but Pamela, and she started off going off. Uh, Doug Collins, who's the ranking member of the committee, and I know I use that term a lot, there's the committee chairman who is the majority, so that's the Democrat, so that's Nadler, who is the um, committee chair. And so the Republicans, since they're in the minority, their highest person is called the ranking member. So. That's when I say the chairman and the ranking member. That, well, anyway, Doug Collins said when he gave his opening, he started saying, why are we having these people here anyway? We don't need these people. They're probably not even prepared. And she went off saying, I'm here and you're there because I'm the smart one, basically. Um, but one of the most important things she said was that when Trump invited and really demanded foreign involvement, that went against everything in our rep republic, and it was the ultimate abuse of power. He has the power of his office. He went to the Ukraine as the president of the uh, greatest country right now in the world. And he went there with that power saying to them, if you just make an announcement on CNN, you don't even have to do the investigation. Just make an announcement. That's all I need. And he did it so that he would win the elections because he could then use Joe Biden the way he did Hillary and her emails. And so um, the, the fifth thing is what I believe the articles of impeachment will be. And an easy way for you to remember this is A, B, C. A, I believe the article of impeach, articles of impeachment will be abuse of power. He just used this great power he has as the president to try to get someone to do his bidding. Um, B, bribery, because he was holding up not only money, but a White House meeting. And a lot of people may say, oh, a White House meeting, that's not a big deal. It's a really big deal. Because if you can get a photo op with the President of the United States, you can go back to your country with a lot of power. And it was a really big deal for the Ukraine because they were trying to show Putin that America was on their side. And so... 
Trump purposefully held the meeting back, totally held the meeting back. Um, so abuse of power for A, bribery for B, and corruption. Um, because then once they started going around and trying to hide it and Rudy is over here and that's a corrupt system. So those are the five important things for you to know. Let me tell you very quickly about Jonathan Turley, um, who, he, as I said, he voted for Clinton, even though he spoke and said that he felt that Clinton should be impeached back at that time. He was one of the um, legal scholars even back then. And so he felt that he should be impeached, but he doesn't feel that Trump should be impeached yet. He feels that there's not enough evidence and nothing rises to um, the evidence. I don't know what he's seeing or what he's drinking, but all the evidence is laid out to me. I do recognize, however, that I am seeing this with different eyes than some people. So it was very interesting listening to his arguments as well, because he opened up his statement saying, I don't like Trump. My wife don't like Trump. Our kids don't like Trump. My dog don't like Trump. Um, something like that. It was close enough, but I liked it. I heard it that way. But basically he did say something like that. So his point was he wasn't there because he's pro-Trump. He was there because he feels that um, it's not time to... Uh, think about impeachment. He believes that there's a lot more evidence to be gathered. The Democrats say, let's do it now because Trump will try to interfere in the 2020 elections. We got to get it done. Okay. That's it for tonight. The top five things. I'll be back. Bye.